Hello and welcome to my channel. Well, this topic is about knife security. Not knife safety, although those terms are interchangeable a lot of times, but knife security. Now, what I'm talking about is what do you want to secure your knife from? Who do you want to secure your knife from? Is it a child that you don't want them, you know, messing around with and getting cut? Or is it a thief? Someone that you don't want stealing your stuff. So there are two different, you know, types of ways, but a lot of times you protect them in similar ways. So I want to say right off the bat, you know, as far as like with uh, guns and gun locks and stuff, they're some of the worst locks in the world, man. I mean, if you watch, I've, I've picked them for myself. They're easy. A kid with improvised tools can get into a gun lock that's like protecting the trigger and stuff. So guns are different than knives, but we're talking about knives right now, but a lot of it's similar. Let's say you're going to a, a knife meet or something, you know. And you're going to meet a lot of your friends, and you're going to meet a lot of, you know, people that you'd like to meet and everything, you know. So you've got, like, a knife roll or something. Um, there's no physical security on it other than it's just holding your knives together. And it's heavy, you know. So if you set it down somewhere, you think, ah, somebody, and, you, and somebody says, Man, you got to check out this Medford over here. Come on, check it out. And you turn and you look. By the time you turn back around and notice that your knife roll is gone, your knife roll is long gone. And whoever picked it up is not going to be carrying it in their hand, walk along, knife roll. No, they put it in a backpack or a bag or something else, and it's gone. You know, and unless there's cameras and stuff watching that, it's history. So, one of them is like physical security. If you've got a bunch of knives and you're in your house um if you put it in like an interior door place you know like a closet or something and you've got a lock on it first off interior doors and houses are a joke and uh any burglar that comes in or anything like that's going to be able to go right through that door as far as against kids most kids if you can kind of remember back when you were a kid you were curious i knew how to get through a locked door when i was a child that didn't stop me, you know. Um, so, it's kind of harder, you know, like if you get a, a big uh, wooden toolbox or something like that, or a, or a big metal toolbox like Craftsman or something like that, that might not be bad for, like, children and stuff like that. But somebody that's trying to steal it, if you can lift it up, they can lift it up. And they may not know what you've got in there, but if it's heavy and it's a toolbox... They're either going to make money on the tools, or they're going to make a jackpot finding your favorite knives. So, as far as an interior, one of the best things is concealment. And as far as concealment goes, you can just go back to what, like, Sherlock Holmes said in one of the novels, you know, is uh, the best place to hide something is in plain sight. Like, if you're looking at something, and your mind tells you, that's a dresser, you know, then I mean, burglars go through dresser drawers, so it's not that obvious, you know, like pull it. You can have hidden drawers. They, they make furniture that has hidden, you know, concealment things. So it just looks like a rustic thing, but you turn this star and it pulls out. That takes a little bit more elaborate stuff, you know, like that. But one of the things there is concealment, out of sight, out of mind. So if it's not just obvious, like this is sitting in your car, you're proud of it, you know, and then you go in shopping, and then somebody, you know, they drive off. Not only got your car, but they got your favorite knife, you know, or expensive knife. So, again, that's another one where you keep it on you. It's the best way. And the only way it comes off you is when you take it off. Um, but, really, I don't. I don't have a lot of answers for you as far as, like, home security other than uh insurance you know uh, get those things insured so that if if you are broken into and it's stolen and um you haven't lost everything you can replace you know monetarily you can replace the stuff possibly 
Um, another one's like physical security. Like when I had an AK, um, I had a chain that I ran right through uh, the bolt. So I was through the magazine well and through the bolt. There was a chain with a good lock on it, and I locked it up to, uh, there was a water heater that had a thing hooked on it to support it from the wall. It was pretty strong cable. And I chained it up to that if I was leaving the house because if, uh, if you keep it loaded and you think it's just hidden, like I said, it's an apartment or a house, burglars, it's, you want to delay them by time. So if someone runs into that, it wasn't hidden, you know, like visually. When they open up the water thing, they would have found the AK sitting there. But they wouldn't be able to use it right away. So if you walked in on them, you're not going to have your own gun being used, you know, against you. And um, most burglars, like I said, it's time. So you're going to delay them. They're going to have to cut that or get through it or something and be prepared for it. So it's just that, you know, you have that chance of staying there. And the other thing is like a trail cam. Get yourself a trail cam and put it up uh, in your in your house. It covers your uh, door or window or whatever. So if you are broken into, you're going to have a visual evidence, you know, at least of who it was or how many people it was that uh, did that. But yeah, there's no perfect thing on this because like I said... Uh, you can be fully protected or think you're fully protected and you let your guard down one second and boy that's all it takes it don't take long uh, people that know what they're doing and again you're know, like a professional thief it's going to be prepared you know they've already got scoped out your place or whatever and they know exactly what you've got and what they've got to go against so when they go in they're not going against you you think oh, i'm tough i'll, I'll stand off anybody you're not even going to be there you know, when this happens. So, yeah. Um, usually the best thing, you know, for like children and stuff is keep it out of their uh, sight and out of their hands and stuff. And usually strict. When I was a kid, you know, we knew even if you found a gun or a knife, uh, not to play with it. Uh, because, well, especially with firearms, uh, you may be... A, in my case, I was entrusted with firearms up to extent. You know, I was allowed to shoot them only under adult supervision and watching me and stuff like that. It wasn't until much older in life I was able to just take a gun out and, you know, or even be allowed to have a gun in my room. Uh, but, yeah, it just depends on the situation. Like I said, it depends on what you're protecting. Is Are you protecting against a kid getting access and you don't want them to get hurt? Or are you protecting it against theft? You don't want somebody to steal it. And, and that somebody can be anybody, you know. I mean, you could have a best buddy that you're always hanging out with or whatever. And um, maybe he had mentioned he admired that knife one time, you know. And you're over there, you're, you're having a party and everything. And it could be, this is how it gets away. It could be that you misplaced this, that you really lost it. But then that disappears. And the last time you saw it was with your buddy. You know, and he no longer asks you about that knife. He, not, you know, before he was bugging you about it. You got a lot of suspicions, you know, and circumstantial evidence. But anyway, this hasn't happened to me as, you know, as far as like, it did happen to have me with a knife. It was with a roommate that I had when I was in the military. And he looked at a knife I had. It was a very thick double-edged knife, a pretty rare one that I'd spent some money on. And he had admired it and everything. And then it turned up missing. And I asked him, I said, you seen that knife? And he, oh, no, I haven't seen it. And then he knew not to ask me about it. But the, um, anyway, yeah. I've had knives stolen from me and stuff like that. But, yeah, if you're in a vehicle, don't leave it out. You know, try not to leave anything of value in your vehicle. But if you happen to do, leave it in there. Leave it in, like, a locked compartment that's hard to get to. They can get through most things, so it, you'd have to toughen it up quite a bit. Make it hard for them to get through without making a lot of noise or slow them down. You know, like um, one of these Russian uh, nesting dolls. You know, you get through this thing, and then you got to go through this box, and then you got to go through this. And finally, after get through all that other stuff, you know, they find out it's just a tiny little knife. You know, like we wasted all our time for this this thing. 
You know, it'd be in like a 55 gallon drum and they're like, there's got to be something valuable in here. You know, and then by the time they get through all the different layers, you know, it's just a little tiny knife. Like, there, there you can have it. You spend all this time stealing this little knife. Yeah, like I said, I don't have all the answers. Um, I don't have really any answers, much answers, but uh, that's what I would suggest. Just out of sight, out of mind, you know, if you don't trust somebody, don't show them your entire collection. I've had coins stolen from me when I was a kid like that. We used to collect in the Whitman coin collection silver coins that were in circulation a lot of times back then you could find pre-65, and I was, you know, I was born in 57, so... There were coins circulating around that were silver, and I knew they were going to uh, go up in value just because they were switching over to the clad stuff after that where it was um, somewhat silver and, and copper. But anyway, uh, a neighborhood kid that had been invited over, I showed him our coin collection one time, and then later on, when I went to look at the coin collection, he was pretty good at it because I never saw him do it. He didn't do it, you know, obvious or anything. But uh, a bunch of those coins were missing, gone, and I didn't take them. <laughs> and I didn't show. I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't show it to a lot of people. So, <sighs> yeah, I got in trouble for that. My dad was like, "Well, but I tried him. I think this other guy stole him. No, he he got mad at me. You, you took him, didn't you? No, I didn't. Honestly, <laughs> I like collecting coins. Anyway, there you go. There's there's um there's not a whole lot like I said that I could tell you about this other than um if if somebody knows how to pick locks, anything that's got a lock on it with a clasp and stuff like that is going to be, most of them are going to be fairly easy, so don't just depend on that. Uh, also secure it physically, like if it's a little box, you know, a cigar box or whatever, and you've got a lock on it. Also have that cable down somewhere, so now they've got to bring lock picks and wire cutters, you know. Um, and if it's light enough to pick it up, then somebody can pick it up, so, you know, you can put something heavy in there and stuff like that, but really, sorry, I'm rambling on on this, mainly because I don't have any knives to show you other than a tiny little knife. So, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.